I was very lucky. I, I did a lot of shows where, where we designed everything. I mean, some people do shows and then they go out shopping, but this was not about shopping. This was about design because it was all about variety and creating characters and uh, creating excitement and making, making the star look as fabulous as she could. And, uh, and I had some pretty fabulous people to work with. Uh, the, usually, you, on a weekly show, like a weekly variety show, you have no more than a week to, to do anything. If you know that a star is going to be needing, like Carol Burnett needed an opening dress every week, I could start early and, and get some ahead. But we always got behind, no matter how hard you try. And Cher always needed evening gowns, you know, whether they were, they didn't pertain to anything, they were just a, a pre presentational kind of thing, an opening dress or anything. We'd start, but you get, the shows were so huge that, that you never really got ahead. In the beginning of the season, I would get ahead a little bit, and then it would always get messed up as we went along. Um, you get a script. You get a script, you read it, you talk to the choreographer, who is usually the person that's sort of controlling what people do in the clothes. Uh, talk to the producer, if they have an idea of how they want something to be. Uh, you know, I was very lucky. A lot of it was kind of left up to me to decide. I would have meetings with the set designer, and I'd say, well, I'd like to do fuchsia and this and this and this. Uh, or I'd ask him, have you any ideas? And we'd have to work together because it had to look good together. It had to look like it came out of one place. Um, sometimes it, it ended up not looking that way, but we, we tried. Um, talked to the choreographer, talked to the producer. The star was usually, I mean, for me, was the last person that we worried about because we kind of had a handle on them. Um, and if it was costumes and stuff, they had to trust us. They were so busy learning the material. We were so busy. I mean, I would get a script on a Friday night, the night that we would tape a Carol Burnett show, for instance, for the next week. And while we're standing there waiting for set changes and whatever, I would be reading the script very quickly to see what was in it, to see if there was anything horrifying that I didn't know about, you know, because sometimes there would be. I mean, it would just be like, you go, you expect me to have this by next Friday? And, and they'd say, yeah. And they go, all right. <laughs> and then I'd work all weekend. I'd design it all weekend. I would, I would shop fabric if I needed to on Saturday. I would get it on paper Monday morning when I came into work. To, to my workroom over on Melrose, um, I would have sketches already. And, and Ernie Flatt, the choreographer, would stop on his way to work to see what I was going to do in the numbers that he was involved in. So he could, wouldn't, and I would give him copies of them so he, he wouldn't choreograph something that they couldn't do in it. Or if he wanted to do something special, he would say to me, oh, but I wanted to do this fan kicks over here and they have tight skirts on. So I would, I would adjust all that right then and there. But it, you, you had no time to sit for a day or a half a day and kind of wonder what you might do. You just had to sit down, make up your mind and do it. And Carol's characters, uh, I would only call her if I was, if I thought that I wanted to take a character, Carol Burnett's character, someplace else that, that it didn't say in the script, or give it an extra little edge that, that wasn't there. So she, when she's in rehearsal, she would know what I was thinking. Or if she didn't agree, she would tell me. Usually she agreed with me. Very often she didn't really know what the character was wearing until she walked into the fitting. On Wednesday, she'd come to the fitting. So we had to have all her costumes ready to fit by Wednesday. Not finished, but ready to fit. We fit dancers on Tuesday, which meant Monday, often my workroom would work well into the night getting things ready for the dancers to fit the next morning. The fittings were very rough, but that's our only choice. And then uh, then on, on Thursday, we would fit the guest stars. We'd get all that together. And usually Thursday night, it would be, it would be a late night. And uh, early, early Friday morning, the clothes went on everybody for a run through. So, it, it, and these clothes were not, you know, thrown together with, you know, cardboard and crepe paper. I mean, they were really made clothes. And uh, of course, as, as the years went on, like on a Carol Burnett show, or even on any show that's been on for a couple of years, you start developing a stock of things, which is fabulous. You know, your dancers all have their tuxedos, and, and the girls all have their basic uh, bustiers and, and, and leotards and, and things. So you can use that as a base sometimes and work on it. And that, that's a way that I, that I often did. You know, once you have your basics, it's not so hard. Oh, I could use that, and I could take that, and then I'll add this, and it's. Uh, and but you know, the basic fit is there, and, and we kept the same dancers pretty much all year long. So that was that was hard when you have big big production numbers. Uh, Carol's clothes, her stock started getting huge. 
And there was always, if you're in trouble, you could always go pull a gown or pull something uh, from another show. Uh, Cher's things, she had a lot more clothes than, than, than Carol. I mean, Cher would have from 13 to 20 changes in a show. And uh, I was always grateful when she'd play a, an existing character because then she could wear Laverne, her Laverne costume or her whatever. But, um, you know, that show was all about what she was wearing. And people would tune in to see what she was going to wear or not wear or how much skin she was going to show or whatever. I mean, she was a hot number in the 70s. And, and people really enjoyed looking at her and, and copying her. And uh, fashion changed. Fashion was influenced by what, what we put on her. You'd start seeing these funny knockoffs in the department stores and go, hmm, oh, that looks familiar. Hello. But that's the way it was, and that was exciting. It was very exciting.